Hello friends and welcome to a new, actually our first sofa session here at Siwi at the World Water Week in Stockholm. We're going to be chatting with a lovely group of people today. So we have Peter Schulte. I'll try to pronounce names correctly, <laughs> but this is quite a task. Um, from the Pacific Institute and the CEO Water Mandate. Then we have Ola Delaghi from CDP. And then we have Michael Witter from GIZ, more specifically, the Natural Resources Stewardship Program. And we had a Ford fourth guest here, um, Paul Fleming from Microsoft, but he couldn't make it. We are in Stockholm, so this is quite a tackle, quite a hassle to get here. Um, and he was, his flight was delayed. So going um, directly to a topic of conversation, which is the Water Action Hub 3.0. Um, Peter, what is this? Yeah, well, first, thanks for having us. Um, the Water Action Hub is a global online collaboration and knowledge sharing platform for water sustainability. Uh, it's developed by the UN Global Compact CEO Water Mandate and the Pacific Institute where I work. Um, we've called it for short kind of a dating site for water sustainability partners. Okay. Um, anyone in the world uh, can go on to this website, create an account for free, uh, list their water sustainability projects, post their resources or their lessons, and then use it to find and connect and message potential partners. So it, we're really trying to both catalog and catalyze water projects. I see. I like this idea of the dating, the yeah. dating site. <laughs> um, so that's clear to us what Water Action is. So what yeah. is Water Action Hub 3.0? Yeah, so the hub was actually initially launched in 2012. Uh, so we've been seven years or so now. Uh, but we've been upgrading it and iterating on it throughout that time. And Water Action Hub 3.0 is the latest major upgrade, okay. major iteration. We're really pleased to be launching it basically right now, today okay. at World Water Week. Um, and so, so maybe it's a good idea yeah. to mention the website so people yeah, can go yeah. to the platform. So now. it's wateractionhub.org, okay. pretty easy. Um, but Hub 3.0 uh, not only features hundreds of new projects and organizations uh, and a new, easier to use um, interface to make it just more accessible, mm -hmm. uh, it also has a lot of new functionality. So, um, one, uh, in the past, people could go onto the hub and just look up and find partners themselves and then use the messaging system to message them. Mm -hmm. Now the hub will actually use its algorithms to kind of predict and suggest good matches to one another. Okay. So say you are working on a groundwater project in India, if another groundwater project in India comes on the hub, you'll be kind of connected and alerted to one another. So there's this proactive matching. There's the idea of lessons learned. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll hear some of this yeah. from GIZ. Um, but it's the idea that we know there's all these good practices, so we can use the hub now. Any user can go in and write their own lesson and then share it with other people. So for example, if you have a groundwater uh, project and you got some insight from it, uh, you can write it up and then any groundwater project in the hub will kind of be fed that lesson. Lovely. Um, what was the impetus for this, for launching this? I guess it was in 2012? Yeah, so it was in 2012. Um, we at The Mandate, uh, we work with a lot of companies and others, and there was this growing recognition of the need for collective action and collaboration. Yeah. Uh, and so we were working with a lot of companies. Uh, they, they knew that they wanted to work with others to, to tackle these immense kind of shared challenges. Mm -hmm. But we heard from them that they didn't know who was doing what where, who wanted to do what and where, and then how to connect to them. So the hub is really that platform to, to really help people connect to one another. Okay. Lovely. Ola. You're representing CDP. Yes. What what is CDP? Could you could you tell us? So CDP is an international not for profit, um, yeah. and we provide a disclosure platform um, for companies and cities and states and regions around the world to disclose and manage their environmental impact. Um, so for for today. That means uh, an annual questionnaire for corporations, large corporations across the world, to um, disclose each year um, what are the water risks they're facing, where, and uh, how they're responding to it. Mm -hmm. um, so we actually send this questionnaire to almost 5,000 companies every year. Um, last year, over 2,000 responded, so about a 50% response rate. Um, and What's the point of all that data? Well, it doesn't just uh, sit there, you know. We, we want, ultimately, as a not-for-profit, to 
drive action uh, to manage the global water crisis. And um, we believe that that process of disclosing uh, data each year drives companies to um, to manage their risks and uh, perform better on, on water. Lovely. And how are you related to what Peter just presented? Yes, well, um, we're delighted to be uh, partnering with the Pacific Institute and the CEO Water Mandate on this tool. Mm-hmm. Um, the way it works is that, uh, as I said, that we have this uh, annual water questionnaire. Companies disclose their risks, and uh, we share the data provided by the companies with the uh, with the Water Action Hub. So um, it gets automatically sent to uh, to the Water Action Hub. Um, companies can report where the where the risk is occurring and what their response is. And then it's through that data sharing that you can see, um, for example, that Coca Cola is operating in the same river basin as Nestle. Mm-hmm. They may be facing shared challenges and it's the collective action that Peter was uh, mentioning earlier that we need to need to drive. Okay and uh, Peter you mentioned that the hub uses CDB data on on water so how is how is that data being used by the hub or in the hub? Yeah so uh, the the companies and others that respond to CDP will both list their own organization information as well as kind of the actions they're taking to mitigate risk and so those actions the organizations become organizational profiles and the actions become projects in the hub and CDP has just been an incredible partner for this Uh, in the last two years we've tripled the number of projects in the hub to something like 950 and that's largely because of the partnership with CDP. Wonderful, so a lovely partnership. Uh, Michael, what is GIZ doing in in Sub-Saharan Africa? Um, Yeah, so as the Natural Resources Stewardship Program we um, work to safeguard um, jobs and investments that are um, heavily dependent on natural resources Um, and um, as a program we have been supporting 38 partnerships, stewardship partnerships between uh, private, public and civil society partners to jointly manage those natural resources. Mm-hmm. And um, so we, we, what we do is that we um, support and, and build capacity of local governments and communities so that they can um, protect um, their natural resources to environmental threats. Now those threats, um, the, the, the private sector are facing those same threats. Um, So we also include them in our partnerships Um, and up to date we have been working with around 70 companies Mm -hmm. um, from local SMEs to to multinationals and we've been able to um, save or to leverage around 15 million euros from those companies Um, and that that has been um, invested in uh, a wide range of activities, Um, think of uh, wetland restoration Mm -hmm. or afforestation measures. but also um, waste management, plastic recycling in urban areas and um, the uh, water, sa- water saving measures um, along uh, value chains. I see. Yeah. And um, h- how do you see the hub helping you to scale and, and advance your efforts there in the region? Well, I mean, um, as Peter mentioned, um, this, this conference is a lot about dating. Uh, we are we are dating uh, other organizations. We're we're looking for for ways to cooperate, yeah. um, but it's very easy to do that here. But when you go back, um, in my case to Ethiopia, it's it's very hard to continue with that dating um, because th- you know it's it's hard to 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 stay in contact, uh, to to know what people are doing, um, and and the Water Action Hub is I think an excellent way to to keep dating when you're outside of a conference um, because you can see at, at one glance at the website who is doing what in Ethiopia, who is doing what on um, groundwater management, plastic recycling, anything. Um, and then you can contact those, those organizations um, and, and by contacting them and, and working together, um, I think we'll be definitely able to, to scale up and not, not, you know, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, looking forward to that then. So we've heard about CDP, we've heard about um, GIZ. What about Microsoft? How do they get involved in this, in, in, in your initiative? Yeah, well, Paul Fleming from Microsoft was supposed to be here today. His flight yeah. got cancelled, unfortunately. But um, Microsoft is an on- endorser of the CEO water mandate. Okay. Um, and they, like several other companies like Coca-Cola and Heine- Heineken and others, mm-hmm. are interested in this concept of replenishment. Return uh, you, projects that can return water to the river basins where they're taking water. Yep. Um, and uh, Microsoft, I don't want to speak for them, but they're increasingly interested in uh, 
launching these kind of projects around the world and getting partners for them, like I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but what we've done with the hub is created these community portals. Um, and so we've created a community portal for the replenishment concept. So that means that not only can Microsoft put its replenishment projects on there, but that all the people that are interested in that concept will go there, uh, share lessons, put in resources. They can even discuss one another. So there's this emerging concept uh, that they can kind of coordinate and, and help mm -hmm. each other understand a bit better. Good. We're reaching to the end, um, towards the end of this session, so a few questions I still have pending. Yeah. You mentioned uh, that the Hub um, features new community portals. Yeah. W what are these? Could you tell us more about this? Well, that's what I was just talking about. So the replenishment portal is one example of, this, of one of these community portals. Mm -hmm. But we know that there's all sorts of communities of practice that have shared needs and interests. So whether they be around a location or a sector or a topic. Uh, so we have these community portals for countries and for indus like you know we have a Brazil portal and an India portal. Okay. We have a, a portals for sectors, so the apparel sector and and then topics like replenishment. And basically, what they do is they offer landing pages where all the projects, organizations, resources, lessons are compiled in one place so the people interested in those communities have kind of a one-stop shop to, to get everything they need. Okay, once again, you met, you just mentioned the lessons learned again. Yeah. Could you tell us more about this? Yeah, well, this is, well, I should say, Water Action Hub 3.0 is made possible through a grant from GIZ's mm -hmm. uh, Natural Resources mm -hmm. Stewardship Program. Um, and one of the big pieces of that was lessons learned. So this idea of knowledge sharing and good practices and helping projects learn from similar projects in the past so they're more effective and more efficient. Um, and so as part of this effort, we've not only done field visits to many of GIZ's projects in Sub-Saharan Africa to glean lessons learned, mm -hmm. but we've ev even built in this capability in the hub and then posted them on there. So now the hub features dozens of these kind of insights that can be um, shared with other projects in the hub. So if there's a groundwater project and there's a le or a groundwater lesson, any project in the hub related to groundwater will then be fed that lesson so that they can learn from it and build on it. Wonderful. Um, I guess the portal has, um, because this is quite an international and it has many projects from uh, globally, so yeah. what, about the, what about languages? Yeah, that's a great question. So right now it's in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Okay. And one of the things we hope to do at the end of the year is expand, just keep building it out so that anyone who wants to can use it. That's the goal. Wonderful. So now towards the end, yeah. uh, what would you say to people listening or tuning in to this session? What would you like them to do with the information that you've just shared? Well, we'd love for you to join the hub. Um, again, you, anyone in the world, any organization in the world can go to the hub for free, completely free, and Good. build their own account. So we'd love for them to just go to www.wateractionhub.org, press the gold sign-up button, and then from there you can get connected to hundreds of organizations around the world. Excellent. I think that's quite clear. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank, Thank you. you, Ola. Thank you, Michael. Um, hope to see you. I guess I'll see you around. And um, I'll see our audience. Thank you for joining us and our audience on live. We'll see you uh, at our next sofa session. Have a good day.